Welcome back, everyone. Now, it's the 100th episode. We're here. Uh, done 99 before now. That is normally how it works. Uh, today is quite an exciting one. We've got a bit of an announcement to make. We've got uh, the start of something new uh, and quite quite a few exciting things going on. Um, if you're new to the R2Cast, be sure to follow Rural Kitchen, Facebook and Instagram, and also TikTok if you want to see me train my cat how to jump. Um, there's a lot going on on there, and that's where you'll find most information about the podcast. Follow on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, whichever one you listen to your podcasts on. Um, last week, we spoke to Neil Bassett, NJB Hoof Care, about hoof trimming cattle uh, and mental health in farming. Um, good episode, uh, one one that really makes you think. <clears throat> um, he was actually on, for those of you that are rugby fans and podcast fans, he was on the Joe Marler podcast. I don't know who that is. There's someone in the room currently that's probably very angry at me saying that, but we'll get to that later. Next week, we have episode 101 with Ewan Humphreys. Uh, Ewan, known as that Welsh farmer on Instagram, has talked a lot about sort of troubles with the egg sector, uh, especially through bird flu, and now sort of after that as well. Because it's the 100th episode, I wanted to give like a little, what would you say, retrospective thank you, if you will, just a bit of a chat. You'll clearly notice I'm in a bit of a different background. It's actually been filmed on a camera, it's not on Zoom, which is something I'd love to do in the future. I've been speaking to someone recently about how you could make a studio look cool, but that's way down the line. So I'll do a little look back. Uh, yeah, on the 22nd of July, 2020, I released my first People in Farming post, which was basically just, I would phone someone, have a chat, and write a wee story on the laptop. Uh, it was with a guy called Flavian Obiero, the Kenyan pig farmer, if you want to check him out on Instagram. Um, he spoke about sort of coming to country, uh, working working in this sector, finding a job in this sector, uh, and a very skilled uh, pig manager these days working at Plumpton, and I can never remember the farm he's at now. Um, but he also spoke a lot about sort of the casual racism he's faced in the sector. And it was, again, similar to last week's episode, quite eye-opening and, and one to really listen to and consider. I did 26 of these with various folk throughout the sector. Uh, maybe standouts would be your Graham Parker, uh, Cammy Wilson, I had uh, lecturers, I had uh, consultants, I, I did quite a lot, and that was all before New Year. So in the five months, I did 26, and I was like, this is just a lot. You know, I'm a lecturer, writing a thousand words every week was just too much. So I wanted to sort of try something new. Uh, a person called Charlotte had got in touch and said, um, I'm, I'm dyslexic and I really enjoy these posts. Have you tr- thought about a podcast? And I'm like, oh my God, like, that's quite scary. Uh, but let's, get, let's give it a shot and, and see what happens. Um, so yeah, away from that sort of phone writing a story, I'm not, and well, I wasn't, and I'm still not a writer. Struggle to get my point across that way, more of a sort of spoken word person. And I'm following a thing I've written at the minute, and it feels so weird. It's not how I normally do this, but I just wanted to do this. And this, if this is the first episode you've seen, it's very much more normally off the cuff, and in about two or three minutes will be. Um, I got in touch with the Ethical Butcher, a, a, a butcher, well, a butcher company that sort of looks at. Uh, ethical slaughter and, and um, ethical sourcing, uh, sustainable sourcing of, um, of well, I guess, ethical and sustainable meat products that are, come from sustainable farming systems. And they've coined this term Regenuary. So Veganuary is a thing. I've openly spoke about the issues with Veganuary in this country. <clears throat> you know, if you're going to go vegan from an environmental perspective, August, July is your, your prime spot. We got in touch with them, had Glenn Burrows on, and it was great, really great chat. Since then, we've really went through the ag sector in this country and further afield. So 99 episodes before today, obviously. I believe 129 guests, I think six of which have been on twice, because we've got the People in Farming podcast and now the Groups in Farming. So every Friday, they've sort of amalgamated into one. The original thing was to have two series, but they are now just sort of both people eh, in farming, with some being groups and some being individuals. Um, so released every Friday and every second Monday. So it's really sort of went from strength to strength. We've had people from four continents. Uh, we've had literally the food and farming lead for policy in the government of Rwanda. Mad Adam Henson, uh, Joel Salatin, arguably the world's most famous farmer. We've really sort of ticked a lot of boxes. Still haven't ticked off Asia, South America, and I guess Antarctica. So if you're aware of anyone in any of those spots that speak English, because I certainly can't speak anything else apart from Jukter, uh, give us a shout and we can try and arrange something there. <clears throat> um, something very important to mention, in February last year, we took on our first sponsor, The Scottish Farmer, a magazine that sat in my kitchen table, which this is not my kitchen table, it's someone else's, 
again that you might meet at some point. Um, ever since I've ever known, ever since my dad's ever known, it's just always been there. So really cool to team up with with them. And then in December of last year, A Plan Rural Insurance got on board, and uh, they're sort of taking on that prime or primary, I guess, uh, sponsor role, and, and have been really helpful with creating clips and sort of really boosting the the size of the podcast. <clears throat> I just think it's been brilliant. You know, I'm 26 and the, the sort of network, I guess you could say, I've built up has been brilliant. Really thankful, I guess, of that. Yes, I've put the work in for it, but having the support is what's made it possible. 100 episodes, 0.2 million views on Spotify and Apple podcasts. I think it's time for not a change, but an alteration or an addition, shall we say. So those six episodes will still be happening every single month. So you loyals, don't worry. I know there's quite a few out there. Um, that won't be changing. That'll still be happening. But with an episode being released every Friday and every second Monday, there's two Mondays free. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill that in with a new series. It's going to be called the R2 Cast All In. Now, you might be listening to that and thinking, wonder what this involves. It basically is anyone. We want to bring anyone onto this podcast, really chasing Rogan, Jordy, Stephen Bartlett, whatever. Let's have some fun. Um, and really trying to sort of get rid of that glass ceiling that food and farming's created where we're creating a lot of content a lot of hours of content every year probably in the ballpark now of god i don't actually know 55 60 hours of content a year um but let's create more i've got a lot of time in my hands um and i want to meet more people in this world that if, if this podcast has taught me anything is people are the best thing on this planet you meet fantastic folk you get fantastic stories and let's try to go away from food and farming a couple of times a month maybe that'll move up to four uh, but we'll see what happens so far we've probably got someone coming on that's traveled a lot of the world similar age to myself uh, a professional footballer uh, a professional rugby player anything's open let's see what happens um i often say we i say you know we've done this we've done that with r2k when, when in truth apart from myself Maybe some friends, some family have helped here and there, but for the most part, we means me and you guys, the community that sort of help. But you'll notice there is a seat next to me, and it is a different we now. Uh, there's going to be two of us um, for this R2 cast all in. So I'm going to welcome uh, one, one of, well, who will be the co-host for the R2 cast all in. I'll give him a little introduction first, though. Never met him until probably about a year ago, maybe 14 months ago. Um, where I had done a little, uh, shall we say, guest speaking at the local Young Farmers uh, dance. I'm not looking at him at the minute. He is right next to me, but I'm sure he's having a bit of a smile, what I'm saying. And uh, he, at that dance, that, he, that dance, I guess you'd say, became chair of that local Young Farmers and uh, basically forgot to thank me for my work as guest speaker. Uh, and I thought, oh, seems like a nice man. Um, and over the last year, he's really became one of my closest mates. We've done a lot of stuff together through Young Farmers and out with Young Farmers. Um, quite a bit of drinking involved, concerts along with the whole team, uh, performed on the Armadillo, even if I couldn't do anything because of this shoulder. Uh, we've done speech making together, again, not just me and Ed, but uh, the, the, a whole team together. So uh, yeah, Ed, you got to come on. It's an exciting day, this, isn't it? If you're not watching Thank this, you're probably not seeing how cool this is. No. How are we? Very good. How are we? So, good. Pleasure. Good. Pleasure to have you on. It's good. nice to do this with someone. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, nice. that's good. Yeah. Um, I thought you might have lived it down by now that um, I didn't thank you, and I thought you might have maybe taken the hint, but I mean, we're still here now, so. I will never um, live that you're, down. You're never going to live it down. No. I mean, it was over a year ago now. He's just uh, really rubbing this in now, isn't he? Yeah. I did it deliberately, in fairness to you, but... Um, Oh, can't say I'm not a little bit hurt. Right, this started poorly. Do you know of anyone okay. else that wants to do a okay. podcast? Um, I don't see them. Um, wow! <laughs> no, I'm sure there's so many. There's so many people out there that would want to be in my position right now. Not at all, man. Not at all. No, I did actually say to Ed recently uh, as I sort of got in touch with him. I've actually been scouting them a wee bit for this. <clears throat> yeah, um, it hasn't just happened. Felt felt a little bit used, but. Um, <laughs> No, it was um, so it was speech making, wasn't it? That we were doing, yeah, right. um, we we're doing that together, and uh, so I was just basically asking someone questions, and that someone was Wallace um, for our team, and he just kind of thought, well, you can ask questions, and I love an argument at times, so but we'll, hope, we'll hopefully keep it 
reined in enough. <laughs> Might be a challenge. See. We'll have to see. It's actually quite fun, the speech making thing. I mean, I've never done it before. Uh, had you done it before? No. Uh, no. no. No, that was my first time. And uh, yeah, I mean, like in my job, obviously, I'm speaking a fair bit for those of you who know what that is. Uh, but it's different. I mean, I was, I was, I was the person yeah. that was doing the speech. Ed was the question master. Then we had Elspeth, who was uh, doing the vote of thanks, and Callum uh, doing, doing the fair person. And then we had another team uh, from from the club as well. It did great too. But it was. I thought I'd be really good at speaking, but I just not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's more structured than you think. It's like. I'll just give you a topic and I'll spout off for five minutes. Yeah. But no, it was a lot more different than that. But my job is way easier than yours, in fairness. You had 15 minutes to write a speech. Yeah, but like, th- that wasn't the hard part. The hard part was, I don't know, why did I struggle? I love standing and speaking in front of folk. Like, I'm as vain as they come. And I just could not. I was like, my legs were shaking. It was yeah. tragic. Yeah, it just, yeah. I don't know, it just kind of brings a different side out of you, I suppose. But it does. Definitely, uh, definitely improved yeah. massively over the time. So. Oh, hugely, yeah. Maybe um, doing it again. It's good, that's, that's what them things are for. Yeah, well, that's it, that's it. So, Ed, tell us about yourself. We're sitting here currently in your, um, it's not like kitchen, what do you call this? Kitchen. Living room? Uh, kitchen. Um, dining room. I guess you don't use that Rayburn often. Um, no, not very often, no. Um, never seen it used, in fairness. Um, no, I don't use that. Um, how did I get here then? Yeah, so uh, tell us, tell us about the home farm. <laughs> tell us about your your sort of background. Yeah, so basically started off. Um, I was brought up about a few miles from here um, on a beef farm that mum and dad um, bought, um, and they and me and my bro- older brother were brought up on that, and um, so I lived there. Um, all my years and then uh, in S4 I well I did a month of S5 um, and I was doing five hires and I thought you know what I know what I want to do and that is farming why am I going to do five hires on things that probably aren't going to benefit farming uh, and my knowledge of it but there's a course at Barney that would so I thought yeah I'll go and do that instead and it was yeah definitely the best decision I ever made like the amount of things that I learned over that year um was massive and the year after so that was the NC in agriculture Mm -hmm. um and then the year after I was probably already planning to do I was probably planning to do the five hires and then go and do the HNC um but I just did it a wee bit uh the other way around uh I did the HNC at the Barony um but we bought this place here um maybe went out uh 2011 um yeah. and then we slowly kind of been working on it and uh we've we started milking cows in here in september 2019 um so i left college in may of 2019 and uh, we started milking cows here in september 2019 and i've not really looked back from there since and i moved in here about two years ago now so if I ever meet someone that likes cows more than Ed, I do not want to know that person. Yeah, I like he my cows. He is a fan. I, like <laughs> I do like my cows. I can see my cows. It's actually really I, nice that yeah. you know, a cow's been out at the minute. I can see I've my not cows. Yeah. It's, it's nice. Um, nice time of year. So tell us about the cows. What cows you got? Uh, so we've got, um, on this farm, we've got 140-ish um, cows. And the plan is to be going to all pure fleckly cows. Um, it's a bit of a challenge to start with. Obviously, when we're buying them all, we had to start from scratch uh, three and a half years ago. Um, they're not easily found. Okay. Uh, we found uh, we bought a, uh, about 30 from uh, Germany. And uh, so that was the kind of start of them. And uh, we slowly, when we've seen them, Seen them about, pick them up where we can, but there was a mix. There was a whole mixture to start with. There was a few Ayrshire's, a few Frisians. Um, but I was quite glad we did that because uh, I knew after that I was really set on uh, that I wanted wanted to go down the flight through route. It's probably probably leads you to the next question. I mean, ever since I've known you, flex fees have been flex fees have been what you've spoken about. That's been the future for you. You're saying they're hard to come by. Why is why are they the future for you? Why is that what you're after? Um, durability, longevity, they, um, I feel they just tick all the boxes. They don't, 
they won't give the most milk, they won't give the most solids, but they'll be above average in everything. Okay. Um, and you go, like, so when we went across to buy the ones in uh, Germany and the Netherlands, and uh, some of the farms there, like, the st- stats they were pulling out, it was unbelievable. Like, and you come across here, and they're getting them the same results with herds over here, but not the replacement rate um, that they're yeah. getting over there. And they're just, yeah, just, I like the look of them as well. Yeah. That does help. Oh, it's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like enjoying looking at your cows all day. Like, funny, funny to work with. Well, how long, how long are you spending with them a day if you're not enjoying that time? It's yeah, no. pointless. Yeah, not like, pointless. But. Well, you said longevity. How long are we talking? Um, so we aim to have a replacement rate around twenty percent. So I suppose that averages at five lactations. Yeah. Um, there's some that will go way more, but obviously we're not pure flexi yet. Yeah. Um, but we're in about there. Probably about four and a half, five yeah. right now. And one one of the things I enjoy speaking to Ed about is uh, he kind of loses me in it, but I, I like data. I like following data. You know, my data is quite podcasty based. Uh, I look into quite a lot with uh, different things for my job as well, lecturing, specifically sort of geography, political geography based, population based, that sort of thing. Really enjoy data. Um, but you you're you're a bit of a data nerd. You like it. You like I, I like my numbers. I yeah, like my yeah, numbers. Yeah. yeah. Um, has that always been the case? Um, yeah, it was probably the thing that I actually got on best with at school. Uh, right. Maths, hundred percent. Like, um, I'm just gonna get figures quite simply, and I, I just, I like looking into figures with things. Um, just, I don't think you should be too driven by statistics. Like, so we still have beef cows as well. Um, so we have about, we're calving right now. We're almost finished, uh, and there's about one hundred and twenty. We're going down the stabilizer route there as well, um, kind of from an Angus Cross, um, moving over to the stabilizer. And they, I don't know if you know much about them, but they are Tell us, go for it. massively like data driven. Mm-hmm. Like they want you to be buying bulls without actually looking at the bull and just looking at the numbers of what that mm-hmm. what that does. What do you um, think of that? I don't think it's. They're definitely. Um, you definitely need to focus more on rather than just, well, oh, that's a nice shape. That that will produce really good calves, and but that's not what's going to make you the money at the end of the day. It's not the fanciest looking things, but they're certainly like they're striving to be the most profitable. So, but I think sometimes if something's a bit too short for your liking, and um, yeah, there's still a few things I'd like to see the look look of animals for about them. I'm I'm a bit of a a I guess a, the number backer as well. And not the person that's based on like the look of her, yeah. But if we completely go like the stabilizers have there down that data route, do we lose that sort of skill of being a stocks person? Yes, that is a skill. Um, yes, it is hundred percent of the skill. I don't know if you lose that because you still need to use it with the stabilizers. It's just they just the numbers they focus on like. To have like they're very particular in who can actually sell breeding stabilizers, um, so you have to be an official breeder. Like we couldn't go and sell heifers to someone that, and they be properly stabilizers. Like obviously we could sell animals, but it wouldn't be through the stabilizer um, place. Would getting a filly, maybe that's not the word, but so you could sell breeding stock that way. You can, like that. You, you can, can do that. Try it. <laughs> oh really? Um, we looked into it and uh, they're like, we've got that many right now. Um, right. They try and have them spread out nicely over the UK and there's a couple around about us right now. So yeah. um, it's probably something we'd like to go down at some point, sure. But, so um, it's something you can get into? Yes. Just got oh, yeah. Spaces for yeah. Okay. yeah. It's just select so like few and if you're in it, you're. Um, yeah. it's good. But like the bulls have like set prices on them. Like, you can't just say, oh, like, bid against someone for a bull. It's like, this is a, like, level two bull, so it's in a band of this amount of money. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Is it still, it's still auction-based within that band of cost, price, whatever, or not? Is it just, if you pay what's there, you'll get it? There's, like, a band that you can, like, negotiate in, right. but stabilizers get... Stabilizer... Society get really spitty if you go outside of that. That's interesting. 
I actually should quickly apologise to listeners because I do have a little earphone in my ear trying to listen to this. I've never done it with mics before. And I'm conscious that my beard keeps hitting my mic, as you'll hear at the minute. So I apologise for that. I'm trying to stay like this and not look at Ed. I'm probably at the wrong side. Um, you're, you're quite busy out. Well, maybe it's calmed down a wee bit now, Ed, but quite busy outside the farm as well with young farmers. Yeah. Could you tell us a bit about that? Um, yeah, so I've just finished my year of um, being chair for Lauren Estelle, um, the club that Wallace spoke for 14 months ago, and he's now a committee member of himself. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I've, um, this, I've spent four years on the committee. I've spent seven, eight years in the club since I was 15, 14, 15. So, yeah, it's been a big part of my life for that time. And, uh, yeah, I was just really glad I could give back and really enjoyed kind of um, doing my year as chair and doing my bit and yeah, it was good fun. So a lot of people, I mean, this podcast originally started to sort of, well, even the interviews before the podcast started to sort of show how you can get into farming, what jobs there is, what career you can find yourself in, the, the different future paths you can create for yourself. And the young farmers is one of those ways to jump in yeah it's a way of if you especially if you're not from farming meeting people in the sector meeting the people you can find a job in so what what made you as someone who's already you know relatively established in that sense at 14 want to join the young farmers um it was probably like that was the kind of social life mm-hmm. how, how to get it at that point that's kind of how everybody gets into it like if you ask the young ones now it's like if you ask them, right, why, why do you do young farmers? It's like, oh, it's because this is the time outside of school. I can actually mm-hmm. see my friends. Like, that's why they do so many of the things. And I think when you get past that first age and you get into 17, 18, you start to realize the opportunities that can come of it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think once you start to realize the opportunities that you can get, um, you think, yeah, I want to kind of go further with it. There's, I mean, look at the youngsters. I mean, I'm basically as old as you can be <laughs> as a young farmer i'm 26 yeah. i'm gonna be 27 um probably bring other things having came at that age but like seeing the some of the youngsters in that club man like the maturity they show the ability it's miles above what i was at 14 and i genuinely yeah. mean that i'm not just saying that as someone that wants to bring up youngsters like it it's amazing the things they do the, the ones that do speech making, they do concert, they put themselves out yeah. there, they do rally, they do everything. And the things that, the experiences they see at such a young age is setting them up so well. For, like, yeah. Did you do all that young, that stuff at that age? No, I was nowhere near as good as them. Really? Uh, yeah, <laughs> like you see you see some of them now um, and you're like, man, like if they keep going the way they are at that rate, like I've no idea what they'll be at 2021. But um, you just, like the most important thing is retaining them. Uh, and keeping them going with it because you you lose so many of that kind of 18, 19 year old age where they're just like, ah, I just want to go and drink every weekend yeah, instead yeah. of bothering doing that kind of stuff. So Yeah, well, there's a lot of things happening at that age, whether you went, go get a job, you go uni, you whatever. And, and like you say, yeah. it's just a different social life, a different batch. But um, yeah, the, the opportunities there are brilliant. And and they, they do, they surprise me every time I see them in fairness. Yeah. Um, which is good, very good. And I think it's actually it's a very bright future for the club. You know, yeah, it's we're, great. we're in a district with, is it, is it six? Clubs? Six, six clubs, yeah. And all of them are brilliant. You know, they're yeah. bringing a lot to this area. Yeah. And, and there's that sort of like, what club am I going to go to? And that makes each club get better. And yeah. it's good to see. It's no, good to it's see. good. I think uh, the whole district, I think, uh, would be quite comfortable saying that we're in quite a good place. Yeah. So. Sorry, Lord and team, if I'm not allowed to say that. <laughs> um, no, brilliant. Uh, this this sort of podcast today, the hundredth episode was, <clears throat> I'd sort of sat and I would spoke to Ed and we'd come up with this idea of this all in podcast that we're doing, and I was trying to work out like a hundredth episode and folk like Caleb Cooper, Ed Martin, obviously, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tom Pemberton, Amanda O, and all these folk were jumping out. Jeremy Clarkson. I've actually spoke to the PA of just about all of them, uh, but not managed to get get any of them for the hundredth episode. And we're sort of trying to work out like how do we make it different and in fairness they're not just saying this i should probably put some kind of proof for the quite a lot of messages i've had of people who want to see a podcast of me and hear my story and i hate to say that i I probably think i'm like the most 
bumptious person on the planet, but I'm actually genuinely not. I get quite weird when I'm speaking of myself. So people have asked this, and I couldn't get anyone <clears> fancy. Well, I got the fanciest there is. I mean, well, look at those biceps. It's a shop. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening in Spotify and Apple Podcasts, you're going to have no idea my advice. Let's go watch on YouTube. Oh, my. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so the guest today is both Ed and myself um, is the plan so you get to sort of you've heard my story here and there but the point of the podcast is people in food and farming and I was not the guest so you were hearing their stories and I might throw little tidbits in about myself but uh, we thought we'd give you 100th episode a little bit about myself a little bit about Ed introduction of this all in podcast so I'm actually going to pass over I am no longer going to be the host of the R2 cast for this point. I'm going to pass over to Ed. And, uh, well, I guess you'll be seeing us at least twice a month now. That'll probably increase. If you're in, if you're out there and you've got a business or you've got something that might be an interested in sponsoring us, get in touch. I'm not just going to take the first, well, I'd say I'm, we're not just going to take the first thing that comes our way. I don't want to have something that's just rubbish. Um, We've already actually had some disagreements, like I'm keen to do one, Ed's not, that's how I want this to be. I want us both to be on board and uh, have, have the right thing. So if you are one, feel free to get in touch and we can sort of <coughs> talk terms. But I'm going to pass you over to our co-host and from now on host, Mr. Edward Martin. Thank you, Wallace. Um, sorry if I'm a little bit um, stutty or anything. Don't be daft. Um, right. I'll try my best, but this is, this is my first time uh, hosting a podcast and interviewing someone, but um, I'm sure they'll have enough to say anyway. So I think we'll just start off. Um, yeah, just he'll have mentioned it in the past in wee snippets, as he said, but I think we'll just go into a little bit more detail of it. Um, so I just want to first off uh, ask, so what is it you actually do um, outside of the podcast, if there's anything. I mean, a lot of people would say that I'm pretty lazy, but I'd just like to think that's not true. Okay, if you want to rephrase it, what is your occupation outside <laughs> of the podcast then? Uh, so I'm a lecturer, agricultural lecturer, um, absolute dream job. It's one of those jobs that, like, you, you don't expect to ever be a lecturer. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're yeah. a student and you're like, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've done five years of uni, um, I actually just this morning got my second postgraduate qualification through the door. I'm a bit yeah, of a, nice, well done, mate. A, a eternal student. But yeah, I did four years of ag, of ag college at AIR, uh, SRUC, so the same uh, university as Ed, but a different campus. And he mentioned that he did NC. And if I have a regret, I'm not really a regretful person. If something doesn't happen, let's try something else. Every door you go through is a new one to open at the other side. But um, if I had one regret, it's not doing that NC. <clears throat> um, the the biggest gap in my knowledge is the basics, uh, and yeah. probably will continue to be. So he <laughs> agrees. Uh, no, I, I no, I wasn't meaning <laughs> agreeing in that way. It was just more that like the amount of practical you do yeah, in yeah. in that uh, and course. It, it's important because you you probably some people look at me and think he's got a master's degree, knows everything. That's absolutely not yeah. the case. The further you go, the more yeah, you know, the more centered you are. Yeah, I think the consultants call it. T knowledge. So you've got sort of all this knowledge and then you've got this thing which we learned. Yeah. Um yeah. and that's me with food security, that's me with probably I guess nowadays sort of social media communications. But yeah, my, my job is as a lecturer at Barony, uh, teaching all the way from level five apprenticeship or technically level four in the schools. Um so equivalent in that four agriculture all the way up to teaching on to some master's qualifications. So that's that's my job. I guess this is now Part of it, yeah. Uh, not part of that. It's a completely separate entity, yeah. but it's now a, a, a sort of diversification in a sense. I do quite a lot of guest speaking as well, and just yeah, I just I just like saying yes to stuff. Like yeah. I'm not a busy person, and I've got a lot of time to throw things in. So <laughs> you, you yeah. can't say that forever. You keep saying yes to things, you know. You'll end up busy at some point. Yeah, but I'm not there. Okay, I'm really. Like, I, you know, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> like, you tell me, I'm. Not. <laughs> You're getting there. You're getting there. Maybe, maybe with this, if this <laughs> yeah. becomes four reps, we might yeah. be getting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, um, so I think everyone just like to know as well. I don't think you've dived into it at all, really, uh, from what I know. Um, so, what was your life before uh, uni? Um, your youth. Yeah, that's a good question. I guess so. I was brought up on uh, Isle of Arran. Mum and dad have a two thousand acre farm over there. 
um, sort of about 40% owned, give or take. Beef and Cheap Farm, 630 ewes, give or take 640 maybe this year. Uh, just mid-teens of beef cattle. Um, I was very much more interested in the sheep. And truth is, before college, I wasn't really interested in, in farming at all, actually. It was football, but unfortunately, when I turned up the football pitch, I looked more like the ball than the players. <laughs> uh, quite plump. Uh, and, and wrestling. Uh, yeah, so that was the two things I yeah. absolutely yeah. loved as a kid, man. Uh, you ask me anything about WWE, I'll know it. Like, no way. 1989 all the way forward. Never knew that. Yeah, man, it's tragic. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> so that was my thing. And then, yeah, it came sort of fourth year. Uh, did all right in standard grades. Fell in love in fifth year, failed everything. Got to sixth year and was like, should really get my act into gear here. Got a few hires. Applied for a few things. And mum and dad were like, they never pushed me into farming. They weren't like that type. Um, and then suddenly I was like, I wonder if I could do agriculture. And like genuinely, when I went to do agriculture, everyone at home was like, does he know what that is? <laughs> like, he's never done anything apart from lambing. And that was true. Um, but then I, I don't know if, if it was even the course at first I fell in love with. I fell in love with the social side. And I don't just mean drinking. I genuinely mean meeting so many cool folk. And it's, it's a thing I still do now is networking. And it's a networking industry. And I love that part of it. And then I started to really enjoy the work and started to really enjoy looking at progressive techniques and whatnot. And then, yeah, that's how we got into uni. So, yeah, from a Ron Beef and Sheep Farm and I love Aaron. And that's the, nice. the Aaron for whiskey, not the Aaron for woolen jumpers. Two R's, Scottish, not Irish. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Don't even know there's actually two Aaron's, I'm not going to yeah, lie. Yeah, yeah. It's really confusing because there's, yeah. a, there's a wool shop on Aaron and they sell Aaron wool, the other Aaron. Oh, no <laughs> way. Hello, confusing. Shout yeah. out to old buyer. So why aren't they just using their own wool when it's black sheep? Yeah, that's a good question, in fairness. We're not allowed to get into that. <laughs> that's for another day, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. We'll get someone on from Aaron to discuss that one. I mean, I guess I'm from Aaron, but it's fine. Oh, so they can discuss it further. Yeah. The, the owner of that business. Wow, that was good. We literally just said that. Well, um, <laughs> um, So you said before that um, you're in your dream job. Um, so why, why is it your dream job? Why, like, why did you get into lecturing? Why did you want to do that? So I remember when I was at uni, uh, I mean, like a lot here, a lot of my old lecturers are now my colleagues. They're my managers, they're whatever. So, I mean, I guess you could look at that and think they must have saw something in me, but I don't know what it was. <laughs> I was not good in first and second year. Like, yeah. I really wasn't. I, I struggled with English, so there was a lot of report writing. Um, I really struggled with that side of things. And and I think, we'll get into this in a minute, but I'll explain what you said first, but I think the sort of the changes in education at the minute are so good, and I would use myself as an example in that, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, come third and fourth year, you started writing sort of projects and you started to sort of focus on what you wanted to focus on. And the thing at my, at my stage was that was in 2017, 18. So Brexit hadn't happened, but it had been voted. Uh, and the thing I was really interested in was diversification. So jumping into that was really exciting. And you started to meet other lecturers. And just some of these people, like they were just clever. They spoke like with... <laughs> That's an embarrassing one to not come up with a word for. Uh, <laughs> they just spoke well and they, they, they got their point across well and, and they were interesting folk. And I remember thinking like, oh my God, these folk are cool. And then I went to like Glasgow Uni and you met like professors, like people that have yeah, been yeah. in education and academia and research their whole life. And I was just besotted by this whole thing. I just yeah. loved it. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I, my, my master's year was intense. Like I did it. I had a log business, I was working full time on Aaron, and then I was studying full time in Glasgow. So it was quite intense. Yeah. Um, but you're meeting these people and they were telling your stories from their life and whatnot, and the research they'd done and the students they'd met, and, and like, it's quite clear I'm a people person. So the student part was really fun as well. And I just always saw, like in my head, I was like, I want to be involved in teaching when I'm older. I want to research when I'm older. Um, and when, I'm old, when I say when I'm older, I mean in late 40s, 50s. Uh, and then, and I might as well tell you how I got into it. <clears throat> um, I finished my master's year. I went and worked as a management trainee at Enterprise Rent a Car, as every agricultural graduate does. And it uh, was like the, the people skills came out there. You know, I was top whatever percent in sales, pretty rapid. I was just a horrible person. I was really good at sales, but I did not like it. 
And then, but it brought me to Dumfries. And uh, when furlough happened, I got furloughed, I went back home, started lambing, started posting videos about the farm on Facebook, Instagram, under this rural to kitchen idea. And uh, two months later, my old lecturer, my now boss, phoned and said, do you reckon have a So it was like almost straight yeah. out of uni. Um, and that's how it all began. So I, I tell students a lot about social media and selling themselves and stuff like So the reason it's a dream job is it was a thing I saw myself doing like way in advance. And then suddenly you're thrown into the deep end really young and you're like, oh my God, am I the right person for this? And there is, there's a there's an inferiority complex in that 100%. Yeah. But it's led me to be like, well, no, I was that person that struggled five years ago. Yeah. And I know how to teach that. I'm not the person that just knows everything. Yeah. And I can sort of help with that student. And and just, just quickly, the thing I'd mentioned was like, you know, the, the changes that is happening. This year is our first year of next gen qualification, which is looking at a placement portfolio based system as opposed to millions of assessments. Yeah. But I would have done so much better. So much better. And uh yeah, here it's this pilot year. There's been a few a few team issues for any students listening. I'm sure they'll say that, and it's true. But we're going to work on that, and I think it's such a brilliant move we've made. But it's a really long winded answer. I apologise. Nice. No, that's yeah. good. Yeah. No, you covered a lot there. Um, so you mentioned though that um, lecturing was um, probably your dream job, and you thought it was maybe going to be your forties, fifties. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think? Well, now now you've got that where do you see yourself um later in life yeah that's a good question that's a, it's a really good question because i'm looking at a few things at the minute i'm looking at doing a phd alongside this job i want to look at the potential positive impacts of social media influencers in the ag sector i'd love to look at that and sort of see like what what like people like cami graham tom louise Anna, Katie, Charlotte, I could 40, 50 on here. Like these people that are just posting content on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, LinkedIn, some folk are doing, Snapchat. Like we have a, we have a problem that farming is seen as environmentally detrimental, er, er, doesn't really care about animal welfare, purely money driven. It's got to be business savvy as a business, yeah. but in this country, I think our welfare is 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 not as good as it can be. It is as good as it is in the world. We can definitely build on that. Um, environmentally, I was sort of use the sort of beef and and sheep example. In this country, I don't think you can think of anything more sustainable. I'm not slamming dairy at all. Dairy in this country, the welfare environmental implications are so good. Welfare poor implications compared to other nations as well. Like we're yeah. we're we're creating a really good product in that sense. Um, that I've just realized I've went off topic, but the reason I'm saying this is we have this really good product and I guess why I want to do that research is to see how these people that are creating a lot of content that's getting out to not just us getting out mm. to the masses could do good for the, for the sector. And then also, I'm looking, I'm in the flows, throes of a sort of Nuffield application as well to do a similar thing, to do something similar, try and travel the world and see what else everyone else is doing in that regard as well. Yeah, uh, but what, what do I think my future plan is? Man, I don't know. I don't know what's happening next year. Like, I just, I just, uh-huh. a plan, no, I don't. I am very organized, I think. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. But I don't certainly have a plan. Just, yeah. I just like taking things, see what happens. Because yeah. life changes. I'm only twenty six, like, or I'm I'm twenty six, or I'm only twenty six, depending on how you look at it. Like, we'll I'm a single only. guy. What's that? We'll go with only. Yeah, exactly. We'll go with only. We'll go with... He's twenty one, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I've got him on here for? <laughs> um, yeah, like, I'm a single guy. I've got a really good job. I've got this fun side thing. I've got a lot of good friends in a lot of different places. A lot of great family. Like, I want to see the world. I want to do things, but. I'm also conscious how much I love the job, man. Yeah, yeah. And love yeah, the good, that's the most important mean. thing. It's got to be, man. It's got yeah, to be. enjoying your job is the most important thing. Yeah. 100%. See those folk more than your family. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 For me, it's my cows and my family. He's but... not joking. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. His cows it's, are his family. Yeah. <laughs> that's his sisters out there. <laughs> it's kind of mean to my sister. <laughs>
I don't have a sister, by the way. I don't have a sister. I don't have a sister. No. <laughs> yeah, so that's... Um, no, I think that's going to... Covered. Um, covered you? Was there anything else? I don't, I don't have much more exciting to talk about. No? I'm not that exciting. Well, I mean, we've covered quite a lot. No, it was three things and I just spoke for a long time. Well, <laughs> when you put it like that, you put it like that. I mean, I only covered two things, but we'll just we'll yeah, skip by true. that one. That's true. We'll skip by that one. You get five years. Yeah. I could I'll think of a couple more. Yeah, well, that's true. I mean, in the normal R2 cast, the food and farming one, I ask, where do you see yourself in five years? Your answer is the same age as me. And, you and I don't know done. where that is. Do you? You've done a lot of stuff, though. Yeah, I've done a lot of stuff. I hadn't done anything at 21. I had literally, well, academically, I had. I actually almost did a master's. But still, like, <laughs> I'd spent most of so it I'm in the pub. brag pretty humbly I'd right now, isn't it? Most of it in the pub, in fairness. Yeah. Different I, I, I do good at that. I do you well do. At that. I do really well at that, actually. We I could have a master's to, in that, really. We don't need to get into these rugby antics. That's actually no, a point. That's one thing yeah, we missed. Yeah, maybe Tell us what's rugby say. Um, rugby, it's probably not the best thing to get into because I might struggle to stop talking about it. Yeah, we'll be here in four hours. Um, yeah, basically, I've been playing since I was three, five, what age is that? 10, 11, right. 10. Um, yeah, I've been playing since then for Dumfries and uh, played football to start at the same time. But uh, no, I just fell in love with rugby and never looked back since. And probably any time I'm not with the cows are at Young Farmers, it is watching or playing rugby. I would just like to say two things about that. One, he chose the wrong sport. And two, <clears> even <throat> when he is at those things, he's still watching rugby. That does happen, yes. Oh, no, you, it's what happens. <laughs> it happened like twice. Mate, you had a game on. We were like an hour away from competing at one of the biggest play, event places in Scotland. Yeah, it's like top. Aside sports places, it's up there. Okay. Right? And uh, you had a game on at a place that looked like there was like eight fans. It did not seem like an important game. It soothes me. <laughs> it was very it, boring. It relaxes me. No, it wasn't boring. I, I, I'm a bit of a nose about rugby. Yeah. But, but you don't know it. Um, did I explain that? Yeah, it just means someone that's sort of, I'd say nerd. Nerd. Okay. <laughs> nose, like nerd. That. Yeah. I'm quite, I'm quite proud to hold that claim. <laughs> you do know a lot about rugby. He's taught me a fair bit about rugby, in fairness. I have tried. I, I mean, I've told him that he is like the perfect size for rugby without getting offended. Like, you've got to use what you got, and he's got it. Like, <laughs> But I'm very good at getting injured. But that just comes with strength and conditioning. <laughs> See, this is where we're not getting into. <laughs> <laughs> This is definitely, I've just realised, we've sort of played to the camera more than actually the mics. But anyway, if you're listening to Spotify now, podcast, oh, wow. apologise about that, but it's, uh, yeah, it's exciting times. Yeah. Start something new, start something that might be quite big. Yeah, it should be fun. Should be As fun. I said at the start, we're chasing the likes of Rogan now. Yeah. Anyone's yeah. coming on. You better watch out. <laughs> yeah, you better. You know, there's, there's so many, what would you say, fantastic folk we could get on, like, if, you know, I said some of the brilliant folk we've met at the food and farming side, but now moving on to just this opening up to anyone. Like, I mean, a lot of you know, for example, I, I don't sleep much. One of the only, po- I very rarely listen or watch anything. I'm quite boring in that sense. One of the podcasts I have listened to about four times, <laughs> I can't remember the guy's name, <laughs> oh, man. is uh, on Rogan. And he's he's a doctor that specialises in sleep. Yeah. And I would love to get someone like that on. Not Huberman, no. Maybe no idea. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. I'd not I'd generally no idea. don't I'd think no I've idea. seen it. Yeah, just listen. Ah, oh, right, okay. I've yeah. got you. Um, but like nutritionists, ex, well, like, police officers, like anyone, just anyone yeah. with a cool story. We watch. There's loads of cool people out there. There is. We just want to find out about them. Yeah. And last night I was at the pub with a couple of folk, and uh, I mentioned that we're starting this. And in 10 minutes, we had 20 folk that could be cool. So yeah. messages, let us know um, who you so think. Many there is one question we're going to mm. end it on. And I think, is it me that's going to do it? Or are you going to ask me uh, what we're doing? Yeah. Yeah, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. Okay. Um, so if I can remember the question. You can do this. 
if I can remember the question. Um, I got it here. Oh man! Oh no, I don't. That's already done. Do you want me to tell you the one? Um, me? Yeah, I mean, or do you I've got the to? rough. Go on, let's story. see what you've remembered. Oh no! All no, oh, no, no, right, here we go. Um, where do you see yourself? I thought in that was the one five years. Go for. But, so it was the other one <laughs> of. You can do this. What would be your question for the next guest? Oh, I like it. Yeah. How did yeah. you think of that so quick? Uh, well, huh. <laughs> yeah, man. No, don't worry, don't worry. Um, so, what would be question? I got there. Do you know it's a bad idea? Like we we thought of this off camera, and uh, um, I said I'd answer it, and I probably then should have thought, what would say? Probably a that. good idea. I haven't done that. But haven't you're done you're here now. I am, and I put you're you in the spot a minute ago. So, yeah. Anyway, let's go for it. What? I literally don't know what the next word is yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good starting word, I suppose. <laughs> what is your random ability? Ooh. Have you got one? I tell you what, have you got one? I've got quite a funny one. I can make a fishing break. A random ability? Yeah. Oh, nah, I don't. I don't think so. Well, it it depends. It depends what you call random, though. I suppose I can juggle. That's like, not random. You can juggle. Yeah, I can juggle. You practice for like six months and I can't do it. There's three apples over there. Do not put me on the spot. Go on. I can do it. Go on. I'm not doing it. Go on, bro. I'm not doing that. I'll do a fish impression. I'll do... <laughs> no, you won't. Yeah, well. Oh my god. Oh, well. I'm actually doing that. Yeah, on you go, man. All right. Okay. So no one watches on YouTube. <laughs> You'll just hear a crash and a bang if it goes wrong. Don't worry. Oh my god. Right. Well, I'll do it behind. Yeah, this is fun. Like the record show for those right. of you that can't see this, he actually did juggle very well. That was probably the best juggling I've done in quite a long time because I've not <laughs> done it in a long time. But no, there was just there was one Christmas I was down at my grand's and um, we were down there for a few days and uh, I got there was like these um, three juggling balls, but they were um, like oh, what's the puddings called? The figs. Figgy pudding? That's the one. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, got it. Yeah, the, the puddings that are figs, figgy puddings. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. <laughs> I don't actually know what they are. But, um, yeah, I know what you're but yeah, they're in the shape of them. And I was like, so I just, like, they were just in a Christmas stocking or so. I was like, oh, I'm just going to learn how to use these. So I just watched like two hours of YouTube and then just bang away I go. I literally have juggling balls at home and I can't manage. Yeah. And I'm, no, it did take, it did take like a whole day in fairness. You know, I thought it was August. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, have you spent a whole day doing it though? Genuinely, probably about 20 hours. Oh, right, okay. Anyway, I can do anyway, a fresh impression. Anyway. So it needs to That's under a day, in fairness. But What's that? That is under a day. But... Okay, in four hours, I'll know how to jump. Yeah, yeah so four tonight, hours left. Finish by 12. No <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of cheating because, in fairness, I can't speak fish, but and I've never spoke to a fish. I don't know how a fish <laughs> speaks, but they are underwater. So this is either a fish impression or a dying human. <clears throat> Here goes. Very good, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> in fairness, I could not do that. Yeah, in fairness, that's quite a skill. I had no friends. It's quite a skill. Yeah. <laughs> so when did you learn that? What um, age would you be then? So you know how you get fish in a fish tank? Yeah, yeah. Never, never you really. don't get them many other places. Than... Nah, but like some of my friends were like speaking to their dogs, and I'm like, <laughs> poor butt wags. <laughs> <laughs> I can't speak to him. <laughs> Did he do it back? Yeah, he got his wee hand out. <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't need to use a fin, they can just do it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. They can do it. <laughs> yeah, I've been caught lying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can also do something else, but I'm scared it's really loud in the mic. So, if you're a headphone you're user, gonna do it now, just be you? conscious. So you get your hand like this, again, Spotify and Apple Podcasts, you no chance. Anyway. Yeah, no. If you do that, a bit of ear comes out, so if you put it in your mouth, it's all cool. And on that note, I think yeah, it's going to end. Yeah, yeah. 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 Good. It's very Jeremy Clarkson there, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> anyway. On this bombshell. <laughs> back to the studio. <laughs> um, yeah, so the Articast Food and Farming will be back on Monday with, or it might be Friday, I can't remember. I'm just out of Lavin, not organised at the minute, um, with, was it Johan? Yep, Johan Humphreys, nice. uh, talking about, well, layer production in, in Wales problems there, uh, of which there has been a few lately. Um, 
we I guess we haven't arranged the first person, but I'll say the name of the first person that I know is going to come on at some point, and that's going to be Dylan. Um, Dylan Goodison was a guy that was in my year at uni, but he was doing activity tourism. And where since I finished uni, I've done another year of uni <laughs> and then went back to uni um, from the other side. Uh, Dylan has travelled, and I'm not going to say a number because I don't know it, to many countries throughout the planet and followed his Instagram. So if you want to follow adventures underscore of underscore goody. I don't know why I remember everyone's Instagram. No, that's... Only I, I, I could ones. barely tell you my Instagram. I was going to say all the important ones because I don't know yours. Yeah, you don't know mine. <laughs> I don't know yours either, by the way. I'm e. Martin? E. Martin, 97? No, I don't think it's, you're I think it's like Edward, 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 Edward. You're Martin. like 2001. I'm 01. 01. And 01, yeah. I'm a millennial. Ugh. Oh. Ugh. Probably, I've probably disgusted a few people there, in fairness, but that's, that's what young ones do to us at Young Farmers. And they say, like, 08. Yeah, exactly. It just like, leave. makes me feel old. No idea how you feel. Oh, Young Farmers this year can be 09, 14. Ah. No, it's in it. I'm going to leave. Yeah. <laughs> you're way too old. <laughs> I'm far too old. Um, That's when you know you're too old. <laughs> no, thanks for listening. We'll see you for episode 101. And uh, I hope you look forward to the next episode of the R2Cast all in with myself and Ed. Good. It's been a pleasure. See you later on. See you later. Oh, we should probably say, actually, because we, we did the question quite a while ago. And now, re say the question now. So the question was. <laughs> <laughs> I totally forgot. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. You've got it. For the next guest. Maybe. Oh, we were doing it. That's why I forgot. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 <laughs> we ended up doing our own. What is your random talent? As was juggling, mine was speaking to Dory. See you next week. Yeah.